Relative abundance. So relative abundance is the percentage of each isotope in your naturally occurring sample of an element. So which is more abundant in this sample, red or yellow dots? As you look at it, you might see that you have a 50-50 yellow and red sample. And so they're equally abundant. How about this one? Which is more abundant, red or yellow? So you can see that there's more yellow dots than there are red dots. By how much? Well, for every four dots, one of them is red and three are yellow. So 25% or one quarter of the dots are red. How about this one? Which is more abundant, red or yellow? Well, you can see there's only two yellow dots and there's 36 dots in all. So there's a lot more red dots than there are yellow. So what does this have to do with relative abundance? Well, when we talk about elements, there's going to be multiple isotopes that are found in nature. And so relative abundance connects to how much of one isotope do you have compared to another? And as you can see here, that's going to connect to our mass. And so here we have the mass of 35.5 is our given mass on our periodic table for chlorine. And so chlorine has two isotopes, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And you can see their masses here for chlorine 35, the mass is 35 AMUs, and for chlorine 37, 37 AMUs. Now the relative abundance of chlorine 35 is 75%. The relative abundance of chlorine 37 is 25%. So we can use these relative abundances and the known atomic masses to solve for the average atomic mass when these isotopes are mixed together. Here's the formula that we use when solving for the relative atomic mass. So you take the mass of the first isotope and you multiply it by the percentage of that first isotope. Then you will add that to the mass of the second isotope and multiply that by the percentage of the next isotope. And if you had more than two isotopes, you would continue to take the mass times the percentage until you had included all of the isotopes for that element. So here's an example using chlorine of how we can apply that formula. So you take 35 AMUs times 75%, because 75% of your sample would be chlorine 35, and 37 AMUs times 25%. Now we need to get rid of the percents, so in order to do that, we're going to divide both of these by 100% to get rid of our percent symbol. And so then we have 35 AMUs times 0 0.75 plus 37 AMUs times 0 0.25. And when we plug that into our calculator, these are the resulting amounts. You add those together and you get 35.5. So now let's apply this to some relative atomic masses that we find on the periodic table and use our knowledge to figure out which isotope is more common. So uranium has two common isotopes. You have uranium-235 and uranium-238. The average atomic mass of uranium is 238.03. Which isotope do you think is more common, uranium-235 or uranium-238? All right, what about silver? So silver has two isotopes, silver-107 and silver-109. The average atomic mass of silver is 107.87. So which of the two isotopes above is the most common one? So let's imagine for just a second that we have equal amounts of 
these isotopes. If you had equal amounts, then you would take 107 plus 109 and you would divide it by 2 because you would have 50-50. And that would give you 108. But we don't have equal amounts. 107 is actually closer to this 107.87. And so therefore we know that we have a greater portion of silver 107 than we do silver 109. So that's kind of a quick introduction to relative atomic mass, and hopefully it helps you understand where the atomic masses found on the periodic table come from.